Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. A little bit more about third-party value evaluations. Are you concerned about the value you are receiving from your engineering designs? Are you concerned about safety issues or getting the best equipment for the service? AES provides an independent third-party value-added reviews of static and rotating equipment. A bit more detail about training and certification. AES provides training and certificate certification for workers. Did you know that 60% of workers claim that training and development is the most important policy for a company, so the, uh, for their careers? A training program with certification is available online and instruction is provided by highly skilled, experienced engineers. If there's any specific topic you wish to be reviewed, please contact us at AES. Equipment re-rating. Operators are constantly looking for ways to improve efficiency and reduced costs. This may require changes in flow rates, for example, or, or, or changes in pressure. Equipment upgrades may be required for more efficient modern technology. AES provides management of change methodology in conformance to API and CSA. We work closely with industry standards and equipment manufacturers to get great results. In part one of this presentation, we're going to go through ASME it's, and its piping history just to get some context of how it's all the ASME B31 system set up. Then we're going to go through, look at the applications of B31 standards, followed by B31.1, its applications, B31.3 applications. As part of our overview, we're going to look at the history of ASME. Why would we do that? What value is that? Well, a lot of the plants are getting to be 50 years plus old, and some of the original designs have specs that you don't recognize because they're now obsolete or they're older additions. And so it's important to see um, how the specs have evolved and so that uh, because technically you should be working on the, if you're re-rating equipment, you should be working to the original spec wherever practical. So uh, have a look at this. In, in 1926, the American Standard Association, ASA, now ANSI, initiated B31 uh, with ASME sponsoring the program. A few years later, in 1935, the first B-31 document was published, and it was called American Tentative Standard Code for Pressure Piping. 1942 to 1955, the, it was published as the American Standard Code for Pressure Piping, ASA, B31.1, and you'll notice that the ASME is not showing up at this point yet. In 1955, B31.1 split into a gas dis transmission and distribution piping system called ASA B31.8. So the gas transmission code is, is among the oldest in the B31 series. Notice at that time it was called ASA. Later, 
1959, the third standard was created called Chemical Plant and Petroleum Refinery Piping Code, ASA B31.3. By 1978, there was a major reorganization of the codes. The codes could continue to evolve, but they made their first big transition in 1978, where they asked me code uh, for pressure piping B31 committee was created. So the, the agreement was that ASME would develop the procedures and the accreditation would be by ANSI. Okay, now we're ready for the B31 list. I've, the ones in green are the most commonly used. The ones in blue are not quite as common and the ones in red were removed. So B31.2 uh, was withdrawn in 1988, but it was quite uh, highly used in the 1960s, so it may show up on documentation. B31.3 process piping, probably the most commonly used spec there is. B31.4 has evolved a great deal, but it's intended for liquids. Um, it, it absorbed B31.11, and so now uh, most operators are tending to use B31.4, but there will be references on older documentation to B31.11. There's also B31.5, uh, which is not commonly used, and B31.6 chemical piping was never published, but it, sometimes it's mentioned. Nuclear piping actually had an was originally uh, B31.7. And what, what's, uh, what's really interesting about these specs is um, they've been evolving B31s. And so when you look across one spec to the other, the sections, most of them are this like section three, I think is for materials. You, you'll find it all in the same section for each of the codes. And the layout's the same. They, they really worked hard to their credit to uh, to make these specs, um, you know, easy to use and to, to jump to different systems. So B31.8 uh, gas transmission and distribution systems. B31.9 piping in service piping. Not I have never used it. Uh, I think it's more common in the United States. A uh, cryogenic piping may be talked about, but it, it was never published. B31.11 still in use, but really. B31.4 uh, depends on uh, what's decided. B31.12, uh, I've never used it, hydrogen piping in pipelines. B31 piping specs that a lot of engineers don't know about. They're very detailed specifications. Um, there's one really intended for operators. It's for B31. 0.8s managing integrity of pipelines. There's another one called B31e seismic design and retrofit of above ground piping for seismic applications, which I believe is mostly for the United States. And there's another one B31g, which is a manual for determining the remaining strength of corroded pipelines. Very interesting spec. Lots of lots of insight there. And the last one in the series is called B31J, which is, includes stress intensification factor, flexibility factors, and their determination for piping components. And that a lot of the, the stress programs, piping stress programs like, like CSER II, um, they, they incorporate that, um, all that automatically into their model building the applications of B31.1 power piping. They're applicable for electric ge generation stations, geothermal heating systems, industrial and institutional plants, central and district heating and cooling plants, and includes boiler, external and non-boiler applications where there is an ASME section one boiler Now, B31.1 covers steam and vapor, 
which is generated at greater than 15 psi of g of pressure and that the high temperature water which is generating at pressures exceeding 160 psi g or temperatures exceeding 250 fahrenheit or 120 centigrade specifications include economizers, heaters, pressure vessels, and components as per ASME boiler pressure vessel code, piping uh, in heating distribution systems like steam, condensate, 15 PSIG or less, from B31.1 includes hot water heating system for 30 PSIG, uh, piping and for hydraulic and pneumatic uh, tools there's a few little bit more, few more details there piping for marine installations under federal control piping included as part of a shop assembled packaged equipment as defined as in in section 100.2 and note also that this requires owner's approval as well. Applications for B31.3, which is process piping, includes piping that is typically found in petroleum refineries, onshore and offshore petroleum and natural gas production facilities, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, textile, and paper. Continuing or processing, semiconductor, cryogenic plants, food and beverage processing facilities and related processing plants and terminals. excluded from B313. There's a few caveats here. Read it carefully in the code, but this has been around for a while. Piping systems designed from 0 to 105 kPa, which is 15 psi. Fluid handling is non-flammable and non-toxic. This means that it's non-damageable to human tissues as defined in section 300.2 and also applicable is the design temperature range of applicability of exclusion is from minus 29 all the way up to 366. Continuation, power boilers in accordance to the boiler pressure vessel code section 1 and its external piping falls under B31.1, not B31.3. Uh, tubes, tube heaters, crossovers, manifolds, or fired heaters, uh, which are internal to the heater enclosure. Pressure vessels, so that's basically equipment. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.